your first shader. The most important thing to take away from this video is the way that the code is divided into the vertex shader and the fragment shader. Each shader, both the vertex shader and the fragment shader, must have a main function. A function is simply a block of code that can be easily called and may or may not return a value. The main function will be called first automatically and does not return a value. A function that does not return a value must be defined as void. So the main function takes the form void main open close brackets curly braces. Take a look at this address. First we're going to write a vertex shader. Inside the back ticks for the variable v shader at the start of the JavaScript, enter void main open close brackets open curly braces gl underscore position equal projection matrix times model view matrix times vec4 position 1. Let's look at what happens here. A vertex shader, when using the 3GS library, is passed a number of variables. You can find more details here. The vertex shader needs to set the gl underscore position, that is the homogeneous coordinate of the vertex, that is it has four values, as well as x, y and z, it's also got a w. The fourth value is essentially used to allow for matrix multiplication to include translation as well as scaling and rotation. But more about that later. What you need to know at this stage is it is essential to set gl underscore position for every vertex in your mesh. Before we see the results of your vertex shader, we need to pass this value V shader to the shader material. Slide down to where shader material is defined and enter vertex shader colon V shader. It's between the curly braces. If all went well, then you should still see a red screen. Any errors, then it's likely to change to black. If you're using Chrome as recommended and you have a black screen, then try opening the console panel using Ctrl plus Shift plus J on a Windows PC or Alt plus Command plus J on a Mac. This will often give a clue to the error, which is more than likely a typo if you are following along with the code examples. Since you simply have a red screen, it isn't giving much away, so try multiplying the position value by 0.5 and running the shader again. The result is the red plane is shrunk to half its original size. Experiment with different values. Pause the video now and give it a try. The variable position is passed in by WebGL and is the modelled position of this vertex. The aim of the vertex shader is to move this into clip space coordinates based on how the model has moved, where the camera is located and how we project this onto your screen space. That is the model matrix, the way the model has been moved, the way the camera is positioned, the view matrix, and the way this is projected onto your screen, the projection matrix. 3GS also provides the combination of the model movement and the camera movement via the model view matrix. To safely move the vertex from its model position to clip space coordinates, you need to multiply the position by the model view matrix and the projection matrix. The position coordinate is a VEC3 object, having a value for X, Y and Z, but no W. To work with the matrices that are 4x4 four four shaped, you need to place a 1 on the end of these as the W parameter. You can do this using VEC4 position 1. This combines the three values of position with the additional value of 1.0 using the VEC4 constructor. You'll see many more examples of converting vectors as you work through the course. Until we move up a dimension from 2D to 3D, that's all we need to know about the vertex shader. 
we can use this small bit of code repeatedly to position our vertex correctly. Now we come to the fragment shader. That is called for each and every pixel in the screen space that contains the plane that we are rendering. All our fragment shaders need to set GL underscore frag color to the appropriate color and alpha value. This is a VEC4 value having values for the red, green, blue and transparency which we call alpha. Try entering void main gl underscore frag color equal vec4 0 0.0 1.0 0 0.0 1.0 between the back ticks of the f shader variable then slide down to the shader material definition and enter fragment shader colon f shader you should now see a green screen try changing the first three parameters to the vec4 constructor for example 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. The first value is the red channel and it expects a value between 0 and 1. The second value is green and the third is blue channel. You would get a white screen if you entered 1.0, 1.0, 1.0 1 and yellow if you set 1.0, 1.0, 0, 0.0. You're on your way. You've created your first GLSL shader. I hope it wasn't too painful. Most of what we've learned so far has been based on the setup of an environment in which we start to write GLSL code. What are the most important things to take away from this video? One, you need a vertex shader and a fragment shader and each of these must have a main function. Two, the vertex shader main function must set the value of GL underscore position and it uses the projection matrix, the model view matrix and the position of the vertex to do this. 3. The fragment shader main function must set the value of GL underscore frag colour to an RGBA format value. 4. Each channel of an RGBA format colour takes a value between 0 and 1. This video is taken from the course Learn GLSL Shaders from Scratch. A link to the complete course is in the description below.